Hi and welcome to our number two from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at Retro Text number one in Inkscape. Now this effect, I've seen it around on the internet and I'm not sure what you would call this effect. So I'm just gonna call it Retro Text number one. And well, let's get straight into it. <laughs> you saw it on the in the beginning of the tutorial. And that's what we're gonna go after. So first, what we're gonna do is activate the text tool. We can press F8 to activate the text tool as well as clicking it in the toolbox to our left and we're going to type Inkscape. Good. And the font that we're going to use is a Lobster. I have Lobster 1.4 version. Um, it's a free font. I'll leave a link in the description to it. And we're going to make Inkscape about this big. Now, because I like this effect when it's thick, I'm just going to duplicate the text, move it to the side a bit, just in case I need to come back to it, because we're going to change this into a path. So I'm going to duplicate it one more time, press D to go to the dropper tool, hold shift and click. And with holding shift, that means we've added a stroke and a stroke which is black to the text. Like this, even though we could sort of reduce this a little bit, I'm going to go and hit Control Shift and F, or you can go to Object and Fill and Stroke. And with that, <coughs> we have our Fill and Stroke dialog box open. We're going to navigate to the Stroke Style tab and bring this down to two flat. All right, that's about right. Good. Then what I'm going to do is hit Control Shift and C, or go to Path and Object to Path, or go to Path and um, yeah, fix object to path. Good, so now that it's a path, the next thing I need to do is go to path and I want to take this stroke to a path. Good. So we could have done stroke to the path first actually, but never mind. I'm going to stroke to path, that is control, shift and C. Uh, good, and then we're going to unify all of this so we can hit control shift and or we can hit control and the plus sign or we can go to unify up here which is control and plus sign and we have this so we've changed the stroke that we just created into a path and then come then unified the whole paths together good so now that we've done that I'm just gonna go to view display and outline. Good, so this right here is the outline of the path that we had changed, that stroke that we had changed to a path and we're gonna select the inscape which is the text in the middle. We're going to change this to a path as well. Control and C. Oh, Control Shift and C, sorry. No, yeah, Control Shift and C. And we're gonna select the two of these and unify the two. So path and union. Oops. Let me just scroll down. All right, these need to be changed to, needs to be unified. So go path and union first. And <coughs> once these are unified, sorry. Good, then we're going to go back to view display mode and normal. Let's give it a different color so we can see what's actually happening. And we're going to select the path that we the stroke that we changed to a path and the text that we changed to a path and we're going to unify both of these and the only reason i've done this is because i want this to be a little bit thicker i think it the effect looks nicer when the text is thicker go to scrape it down a little bit holding control shift and left the, the left mouse button we're just scaling it down just a little bit <coughs> good and now we have our text and this text is going to be orange. It's gonna be a gradient, but first let's make it orange. And then we're gonna to go to extensions, generate from path and motion. And it's already on foot the degree amount that we want. And the magnitude I've set to 20. Let's gonna see if 20 works. It may be a little bit high. You can use live preview also, but that takes a lot of render power. So I prefer just to apply it. I see what it's like. Close. Okay, 20 is a bit a bit much. So what we're gonna go, we'll go to path, 
filters extension sorry go to generate from path motion once more and we're going to put this to five and apply it. oh have to make sure that this is selected go once more and we're going to go to generate from path motion and apply okay let's close it even five looks a bit big but let's check it and see give it a different color it is slightly on the big side of life um probably have to reduce it one more time so i mean this is sort of trial and error trial and errorish because um you know, I copied and pasted this from another document and then just reduced it a bit and the pixel count is already radically different from what I set before. So I'll have to definitely do some research to make sure that um, I know how, how the pixels are calculated when dealing with the motion tool. Let's go to motion and let's pick a, say a free apply. It should give me a better one right three looks really good all right so we've got ourselves the motion here good okay I'm not sure why this disappeared though I can draw this in a little later in fact I'll draw it in right now should it okay so as we can see the motion path has the motion extension has allowed us to have this um has projected the inscape path 45 degrees you know um down to give us this 3d effect and this would be the basis for you know the, the effect here and it the extension separates the halves them into what looks like tangents of 45 degrees 45 degree um, paths so we're gonna have to unify each one of those so we'll have to take our time and unify each one um, let's see if we can just change it a different color for now and bring it down so we can see it a bit better All right, now because unifying is sort of time-consuming I went ahead and did the unifi unification for this one right here ahead of time, so you don't have to spend so you don't have to spend time watching me unify each one of these. But you're gonna have to unify them so that when you're ready to add the gradient, <laughs> it's a simple matter. So we have it up here. Let's move this to the side and change this black to orange. So we have it here and we're going to move on to the next step, which is to add a stroke to the Inkscape path right here. So we're going to just hold shift and click this white and add a stroke and we're going to make the stroke 0 0.1. In fact, let's change it to about 0 0.25, 35, 35 is good. So we have the path and we're going to remove the fill come down here and let, right click and remove the fill and so we have the path Good. for the next part of it we're going to add the gradient to the orange and we're going to have it scale down and we want the orange down here and then we're going to go into the gradient tool make sure the gradient tool is activated and we're going to hold control and double click on the gradient line Take down the snap off and so that we add a gradient stop and want the gradient stop to be closer to the top, possibly about here. And we're gonna go to fill this make this slightly more orange. There was a slightly good and lift it up and just lift it to the top here. So slightly about here. Yeah, that looks good good and then what we're gonna do here we're gonna duplicate the orange gradient here let's give it a flat color orange for now and we're gonna need this as a clip 
Then we're going to draw get activate the Bezier tool. Click about at the end of the eye right here and hold control and draw a straight line across to the end of the E. And then we're going to duplicate that with control and D. Hold control and drag down so it drags down in a straight line. We're going to select the two of these holding shift and then we're going to go to path, path effects. Good. Oh, and before we can activate path effects, because we notice that the options are grayed out, we have to first unify the two lines. And now the path effects dialog box becomes active and we can add a path effect. And we're going to add we're going to oh, let me just scroll up going to add interpolate sub paths good and when we add interpolate sub paths we get five steps naturally we're going to change this to about 41 steps may need a bit more good so that's about 45 steps all right and then we're just going to lower selection by one and we're going to use this as a clip that's the duplication that we made and we see we have the clip and we're going to move it down one more so it's behind the stroke and that's looking okay then we're going to select this orange here so holding shift and D and then pressing D, pressing D and then holding shift, we select the orange. We could make it a bit darker. I'm gonna go to stroke, um, stroke paint. Let's make it slightly darker. Let's use the saturation a tad too. Good. So we have this right here. Looking really nice. Um, it's a bit sparse though. I think I'm going to need to increase the go to path effects, increase the amounts of steps. Let's increase it to about 66. Ah, I think about 68 looks good. All right, awesome. So we have the paths increased. And we see it's starting to take shape. Instead of using the white, let's use the let's use a light cream here for the stroke. Good. All right, and now we can actually move into doing the gradients for these. And for these first two, let's just grab you guys. Looks like I forgot to unify some of these. It's okay. Unify. Okay. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna select this color here. Select the blue. And um, lift this up a bit. Lift the blue and just lift the blue up here too. Unify that and um, lift the blue. All right, and let's lift the blue for these two too. And lift the blue around here. All right, so essentially we're just coloring them in. We will do the gradient very soon for each piece. And uh, we have a gradient for each one. Up here and here. Just filling them in so that we can see how the colors are going to operate. All right, and um, basically we have an understanding of how some of these colors are going to look here. 
good so we're just going to press G to go to the gradient tool and just drag down and get some of these these nice effects that we want give it that nice 3d effect just press the gradient tool drag up press D and select this blue up here Right, and we're gonna do the same with these as well. Select this blue, scroll up and select this blue, lift it up. So what we're doing is just going through and adding the gradient so that we have that sort of realistic look that we want. Good, and we're gonna add some of this too. Scroll up. Have this scroll up to a blue. Right, so I mean throughout this you're just taking your time and going through each one of the gradients making sure that they are they're straight and they look 3D and you know they follow the light source that you are using This will most likely be the longest part of it, you know, outside of you having to unify each one of the paths. It's over because we got a shadow in there. Alright, so this is gonna have a bit of light. Good. And and lift you up. Alright, and this is also gonna have a bit of a light. Lift this above. Okay, and then slowly you can see how the shapes are coming into being. And yeah, no. use one of these and bring it up bring it up Good. and just make this inside dark okay so we've done the gradient part of the inscape can do this C as well a bit and we're going to move on to the internal shadow that we have here in the Inkscape file there. So I'm just gonna move this to the side a bit and select the internal orange, duplicate it. And the shadow is from the top. The shadow is the top left. So we're just gonna carry this down. Oh, duplicate it one more time. Bring it down in the hierarchical order of height, or which one's higher than the other. And this will bring it down slightly. Let's change the color so we can see what we're doing here. Use a brown. 
you can see that we're creating the shadow in the top left about up here good so let's let the two and go to path and difference then what we're going to do is we're going to select the top orange make everything the top orange then go to fill and stroke dialog box go to the fill tab and we're going to make it darker and slightly redder right. and that will give us our shadow then what we're going to do next we're going to bring it underneath the stroke to see how it's operating and we see that it's working for the most part but there are a couple things that need to change um, this needs to be brought up a little higher and yeah that looks good that looks good you know some of these can definitely come around come around a bit wider and uh, this circle cutoff can be amended as well as this going up a bit higher good too all right let's carry up this e2 needs to go a little bit higher yeah this is looking pretty good then what we can do lastly because we're gonna blur this so it's gonna need to be clipped we're going to give this a blur of say 0.7 that looks good and then we're going to select this underneath it the blur and select what the inscape that we duplicated and go set clip that way the blur doesn't go outside of the lines yeah and this is starting to take shape starting to take shape okay then so we have all of these here Yes, and we can start to look a little bit about you know the color of this orange think it could saturate a little bit more oops saturating I've desaturated it let's add a bit more lightness and a bit more saturation all right if you find yourself and the blur is giving you problems you can always go to view display mode and no filters oh yeah no filters so you see the blur so now we're going to add the shadow so it's going to simply move this to the side and select this and then press ctrl z duplicate it once more and we're going to go to path sorry extension generate from path and then go to motion once more and we want the motion to be 135 so we're moving in the opposite direction and we want it to be about 7 and we're going to apply Let's see how it gives us it's a little bit low we could um, get more out of it so instead of, set, instead of seven, you're gonna to go to path, extension, sorry. Generate from path, and we're gonna to go to motion once more. And instead of seven, let's try 15, and apply. Okay, this looks a bit better. See what it gives us. Well, for this we're just going to select this cream here and bring it down drive and then bring it down in the hierarchy nope let's just try this again right see how it's looking it's um it's still a little bit on the short side and I mean this is trial and error like I said before you're just gonna try it until you you're happy with the results 
so I'm gonna go back to this make sure the path is selected go to extensions generate from path and motion and let's make it 20 close right I think this is the right size for this now you know I'm gonna delete the text in the middle drop this down to the bottom all right bring this to the top yeah this looks like the right the right size for true and we're gonna do here just make it a cream color going from the stroke dialog box make it into a long shadow nice and we're going to use the gradient tool and just select the color oh we have to unify everything so we're just going to press ctrl and u to ungroup then go to path and union then we're going to activate the gradient tool and drag down gradient tool is activated with g and we're going to play about with the gradient until we get the sort of gradient we're looking for. Good. Then I'm going to apply a, bl a blur of 0 0.4. Uh, let's go 0 0.7 yeah, or 8. See how it goes? No, a bit too defined. Let's give it a bit more pump. Oh, we've got the no filters on, so let's go view display mode, normal, right, so let's bring it back down a bit, so we can see what's happening, okay, our one looks good, and let's blur it from something a bit darker, awesome, so we've got our shadow here, take away the saturation a little bit, yeah, so we've got our shadow here, our drop shadow, and um, or our long shadow rather. And now we're going to add the drop shadow. So we're going to duplicate this one more time, and we're going to make this brown, and then just bring the brown lightness down, really dark. We're going to place it about here. And we're gonna go to blur. Let's give this a 1.7. And then we're gonna drop it underneath the text itself. And let's just move it. Whoops. Let's lift it to the top for a bit. Move it down so we can see it. Let's make it a bit darker. Make the blur a little less pronounced. Okay, awesome. And we're just going to lift it up. Right, and we can reduce the opacity now. That's about right. And we want this blur to have a bit more character to it make it brown and bring the brown down then we're going to duplicate it and blur a bit more perhaps a 2.7 looks good and you're going to be playing with these variables a bit as I did you know until you get the one that you're looking for just reduce the blur to nothing on this one first and we're going to inset this so go to path like outset and outset a bit Let's just zoom in and outset because the outset is determined by pixels. Zooming in will make it more precise. It's gonna outset it, making sure it's selected. Is it selected? Let's lift it up a bit. Go to path and outset. Great. And then we're just going to blur this outset. And we're gonna give this outset the brown color. 
good. And that just adds the reflection there or the different shades of the shadow helps add realism to this blur drop it down a bit and make sure this dark one is selected it's a little far and it's not dark enough in my opinion all right so it's dark enough here so we have the drop shadow here and we have the colors here i mean we can definitely make the oranges a bit more saturated but for the most part this is complete the retro number one tutorial if you enjoyed this tutorial give it a thumbs up if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the in the comment section I'll be happy to answer them. If you have any suggestions, you know, feel free to leave them also. I have a lot to learn and I don't presume to know everything. And I'm super happy when you, you know, have when you have those constructive points to make, you know, to, and that helps improve everybody, it helps the comment section, helps myself, you know, and um, we appreciate that. So, and to we see each other again. Get up and design a new door. Later.